Hello, everyone, and welcome to our newest lecture. And um, before we get into the main topic of this lecture, which is going to be the flatworms, the roundworms, and the arthropods, I'd like to do a quick review on what we've done so far. So uh, the first thing we talked about was body symmetry. Remember we said organisms could be asymmetrical, which means that no cut, any cut that you do, um, imaginary or I guess uh, an actual cut, would produce two mirror images. You could have a body plan that is called radial symmetry, which means any cut on the up or down axis would produce a mirror image. And we could have a body plan that produced bilateral symmetry, where only a vertical cut from the front to the back produces mirror images. And I said, if you look in the mirror, you'll notice that we as humans are bilaterally symmetrical. Um, then we talked about diploblasts versus triploblasts. And we talked about the presence or the absence of a body cavity, which we called the coelom. And which opening did the blastopore become? If it what becomes the mouth, that organism is known as a protostome. If it is the anus, like in humans, it is that we are called deuterostomes, or organisms that are that have that are called the deuterostomes. Um, then we talked about sponges. Remember, sponges are the first multicellular organisms. That large opening on the top is called an osculum. They're fed through coanocytes, and it sticks into the spongocele. The coanocytes have a single flagellum that beats, and there's many of them, many, many, many of them, and it beats, and it moves the water through the spongocele and traps food particles. And remember, those food particles have to be very, very tiny, microscopic, smaller than cell size. And those food particles get eaten by cell eating, which is called phagocytosis, phagocytosis, whatever you want to call it. But that's how sponges eat. Then we talked about cnidarians. They were that they have a polyp body plan and a medusa body plan, and they have those specialized stinging cells called cnidocytes. And then there's those nematocysts, which are the organelles that fire and immobilize prey. Cnidarians have two types of tissues: epidermis and gastrodermis, but no organs. And they have one opening that is serves as both the mouth and the anus, which means that they have an incomplete digestive system. Then we talked about the anthozoans, literally flower animals. They're carnivores. They catch prey with their tentacles, um, but they mostly rely on those tiny microscopic algae called zooxanthellae that can do photosynthesis and give them extra energy. They have no medusa body plan, just polyp form. And those are your sea anemones, sea pens, and corals. And we talked about the Scyphozoa, and they include all the jellyfish, and they're modal, which means they move around, exclusively marine, meaning they only live in the ocean. 200 described species. The medusa here, that's the medusa, is the dominant stage in the life cycle, but there is a polyp stage at some point during their life cycle. Then the Cubozoa, or the box jellies, um, they're similar to uh, jellyfish, there's just some minor differences in the tentacles, and they are square in cross-section, so cube sounds kind of like square, that's how you remember it. Then we talk about hydrozoans, nearly 3,500 species, and most of them are marine. Most species have both polyp and medusa forms in their life cycle, and a lot of them will form colonies that are composed of branches of polyps that share one gastrovascular cavity, and colonies might be free-floating, and contain both medusa and polyp individuals in the same colony. This is your Portuguese man of war, that's what this is, um, fire, coral, and hydra. From here on out, everything that the rest of the animals that we look at are going to be triploblasts, meaning that they have an endo, an ecto, and now a mesoderm. So before there was going to be only an endo and an ecto, now we have the mesoderm. These phyla are also going to be bilaterally symmetrical, meaning that if you cut it right down the middle, it'll divide them into a right and a left side. They're mere images of each other like us. Associated with bilateralism is the beginning of cephalization. What cephalization? Well, it's basically the evolution of a concentration of nervous tissue and sensory organs in the head. Um, and basically, if you look, we've got eyes and a brain up there, so that's cephalization. And it's the organism will first encounter its environment, know what's going on around it, 
So we're getting the beginning of having a, a head with a brain and eyes, okay? So here we go. Let's get into the platyhelminths or the flatworms. Um, here they, here's just some images of them. If you could tell, here are their little eye spots there for the, this um, little flatworm. And this is cephalization, and there's going to be eye uh, and, and basically neuron um, firing action happening up here, cephalization. And so these are the flatworms. They are acelomate, and that means they do not have a body cavity. And they could either be free living or they can be parasitic. What's a parasite? A parasite is an organism that either lives on or in a host organism and doesn't really survive without living on or in a host organism. It'll suck the nutrients out of the host organism. Um, that's what a parasite is. Again, they have no body cavity, and that makes sense, right? They're flat. Um, they are most of them are parasitic, and there's a number of important parasites um, of us, of humans. There's the trematoda or the trematodes, the flukes, which are internal parasites, the cestoda, which are the tapeworms, also internal parasites, the monogenea, which are external parasites, and the tubularia, which are free-living flatworms like planarians, like that brown one I showed you in that first picture. Flatworms could be predators, scavengers, mostly parasites. They mostly um, have an incomplete digestive system, if you remember. That means that there's an opening, one opening, but it's used as the mouth and the place where you expel digestive waste. They have no circulatory system. They don't have a respiratory system either. They expel gas through cell junctions, which are just places where cells, two cells, connect. And so because of that, they, they are just very, very flat organisms. And they are called monoecious. Monoecious instead of dioecious means that both um, one organism has both male parts and female parts. Um, so that is hermaphroditic, having both male and female sex or organs on the same organism. Monoecious. Okay, that's all really we need to talk about with the flatworms. Let's get into the roundworms, a little bit more complex. Uh, the nematodes. Those are the roundworms. They might be monoecious, meaning they are hermaphrodites, or dioecious, having a male and a female. And if they're dioecious, of course, they will have to reproduce um, sexually, or they could also reproduce asexually. There's more than 28,000 species, with an estimated 16,000 of them being parasites. Nematodes are pseudocelomates which means that they have a pseudo coelom, which means like a, a pseudo body um, cavity. And they have a complete digestive system, meaning they have a mouth and an anus. Most nematodes are gonna have four nerve cords that run along the entire length of the body, on the top, the bottom, and two on each, uh, one on each side. The nerve cords fuse in a ring, and that forms a head ganglion, or quote-unquote brain. It's not really a brain, it's just four nerve cords, but it does centralize in a head region, so it's kind of like a brain. And as well, and also, as it does that as well at the posterior or the end, the tail end of the ganglion. Okay, so that's the roundworms. Now let's get into one of the most diverse um, set of organisms, the arthropods. Take a look. Crickets, centipedes, wasps, Millipedes, scorpions, slugs, lobsters, ticks, worms, um, these and spiders. These are all arthropods, and they're very, very diverse. The name arthropoda means jointed legs. The arthropods dominate the animal kingdom. An estimated 85% of all animals are arthropods, and there's hundreds and upon thousands and maybe even millions still undiscovered or undescribed. Arthropods have a functional segmentation of the body and the presence of, of course, jointed appendages. They have an exoskeleton made of chitin, which is a protein. You know this because if you ever stepped on an arthropod, you would hear crunch. That's the exoskeleton made of chitin. Um, the insects are obviously the largest group of arthropods, and they are protostomes. Okay, what organisms are arthropods? Well, insects, arachnids, these are the myriapods, which are like millipedes and centipedes, and also the crustaceans. Here's a, an interesting thing that arthropods do, and it's called molting. 
and it's this that rigid cuticle um, that basically cover they are covered in uh, covered by I should say um, and it basically uh, they outgrow it and so once that happens they have to shed it or molt it, it's called molting, and they get rid of the outer covering, and they, they've already grown a new one, and you can see this um, crab here, he's basically leaving his, ex, uh, basically part of his exoskeleton behind, and so it's pretty gross looking, um, but all arthropods molt. Yeah, so that's pretty gross looking. Um, arthropods, uh, in terms of versatility, they're extremely versatile. This has allowed them to dominate the animal kingdom, right? 85% of all animals are arthropods. They range in size from microscopic, this is a microscopic image of 0 0.004 inches to huge giant organisms 18 feet long. Um, so extremely versatile organisms. Arthropods have what are called open circulatory systems. Their body contains um, their body cavity contains their organs, and the organs are bathed in blood. So if you think about our circulatory systems, they're called closed circulatory systems, where the blood has to be taken to all of our organs um, via blood vessels. And in terms of arthropods, the organs are just kind of sitting in a bath of their blood. Um, and so kind of, kind of much different than how we work, um, but it's a little bit more basic. Um, in terms of their vision, they actually have very sophisticated vision capabilities. They usually include one or more, usually both, of compound eyes and also these little eyes called um, ocelli, which are just pigment cups. Um, the ocelli are usually able to just distinguish where light's coming from so it can orient towards light or away. And then they have the compound eyes, which make images and in the jumping spiders can actually track prey. Um, so here are the ocelli right here, the little eyes. They're just little pigment cups, and they can just kind of just decide where the uh, light is coming from. And here are the compound eyes that um, can make images. Okay, and that's uh, the flatworms, the roundworms, and the arthropods. If you've got any questions, please send them to me, to me in an email. Um, let me know if you've got anything. If not, I'll see you in the next one very soon.